Oh, hi, I'm Sebastian Handley and I'm going to make this film now about how to make a cheap wardrobe. There's the end of the room there, you see that over there. That's about 2.3 metres wide. I'm going to build a wardrobe in there for about £50. Pounds. It's going to take all of our clothes. Okay, that's, um, that's a bit of spruce plywood. I'm using spruce, not hardwood, because I want to save the Brazilian rainforests. That costs £30, pounds. it's 8 by 4 now I'm going to cut that into four slices that are 350 millimetres wide each. OK, I'm now going to chop this into fins, each one 370 millimetres. I've decided 370 rather than 350 because we've got plenty of wood, so I'm going to make them a bit longer. And also when I cut, I'm going to keep the saw low like that, not high like that. I'm going to keep it low because I want the cut to be really straight, OK, because I'm that type of guy. Oh, also, because I haven't got a straight edge that's uh, four foot long, what I've done is I've taken lots of dimensions 370 away from the machined edge here because I know that that edge is true. So I made lots of marks, 370 along there, and I joined them all up with the spirit level. So even though I haven't got a straight edge that's four foot long, I can still get a straight line. OK, that's the hard sawing done. There's my four fins. And there's a bit of wood left over that I can use for something else. Or if I've got one of the fins wrong, I've got enough to cut another one. OK, now these, these four fins, I've marked which edges are the machined edges, because they're going to be perfect, and which edges are the edges that I've cut. I mean, I'm very, very good at cutting, and so it's very hard to tell the difference, but it's always worth noting which are the machined edges, and which ones aren't. And also, I've um, sanded down the edges just um, to take off all the nibs and any little splinters on the side. OK, now, now I've got these two rods. They're like circular hollow section. You want them circular ones, not rectangular, because we're now going to drill holes in those fins for these circular rods to go through. They're both two metres long. I bought them from the DIY shop. They cost me about £4 each. OK, now those two rods are 16 millimetres in diameter so I'm going to use this 16 millimetre diameter drill bit to drill holes in the fins to receive the rods but I'm only going to drill the two middle ones the drill bit isn't going to go all the way through the ones on either end because I want to cover it up so you don't see the end of the rods now this is the basic design but it always changes as you make it sort of particular for the space you're dealing with but basically we've got one hole has got to be 940 millimetres above the other hole and both of the holes are going to be 300 millimetres away from the wall but if you've got very very broad shoulders um, then you might want to make that you might want to make the fins a bit wider and have it say 32 or 33 away from the wall okay I've laid out the fins in the order in which they're going to appear with the two machined edges at the front on either end because they're the perfect perfect edges the hand cut edges are pretty good, but the machined ones I'm going to have at the edge because they're so good. Now, here I've done, I've marked out that the, the first hole is going to be six centimetres from the top, and the second hole is going to be 940 below that. So if we go all the way down to the bottom, when we get to one metre, there's the mark that I've made to say that I'm going to cut the second hole a metre down. So there's 940 millimetres between the two holes and I've decided to have it so that both of the holes both of the holes are 31 from the edge so if you see that they're both going to be 31 from the edge I thought we're not that pinched for space so I might as well go the extra centimetre for piece okay I've drilled the holes there's one hole there I'll put my finger in and another hole there now obviously what I'm not going to do is, I'm not going to measure it out on the other boards. I'm going to use this one as a template. So the other ones will have holes in exactly the same place. I don't want to measure it on all four of them. I just measure it on the first one and use that as a jig for the rest. Okay, I've marked all four where the holes are meant to go by stacking the, the proper one, the jig, on top of the other one. And so I've marked all these where the hole is because I've just done a little drill sort of thing. But I haven't drilled all the way through because I don't want to forget which one is the original master, which is that one. So now that they're all marked, it's safe for me to drill all the way through because I know all the holes will line up. 
just slotted it together to see if it's looking approximately right. It seems okay so far. Okay, next, these brackets, they cost about £2.40 each from the hardware shop. I'm going to use four of these brackets. And these are, are um, nuts and bolts and uh, washers that I'm going to use. I'm not going to screw the brackets to the fins. I'm going to bolt them through because it's stronger. Okay, I've drilled the first two holes um, there and there. And so that's where the bracket's going to go on. I've done the bracket so that the long bit of the bracket sticks out. Rather than having the bracket that way, I'm having the bracket that way. The reason why I'm doing that is because the fixings that go onto the wall are going to be the big ones. And so I don't want to have to do there and try and reach in this tiny little bit of space to fix this here. And so I'm going to fix that there. Now, obviously, like the other previous ones, I'm going to put this bit of wood on top of all of the other bits of wood so that the holes are exactly the same for all four. So I'm not going to measure it out twice, I'm just measuring it out once. And I've put the bracket at the top because I want the bracket to hang it. I don't want the bracket to support it. If you share the brackets high up. I've taken the bracket six inches away from the top, 150 millimeters, because I'm going to chop off that because it's not doing anything. I'm just going to chop off an angle later on. But you'll see why, that's just a little aesthetic thing that I do. Okay. Okay, that, that can be a, a four, five or six millimeter wood drill bit that I've used to drill these holes. These are the brackets. These are the nuts and bolts I'll be using. You need eight bolts, eight nuts and eight washers for a millimeter. Okay, I've bolted all the brackets on now. There are the brackets bolted on. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to chop off, I'm in my own light here, I'm going to chop off the protruding bit of the bolt with a junior hacksaw so it doesn't snag on the clothes. But here's the trick, you should always put the nuts onto the bolt before cutting it off with the junior hacksaw because if you cut the bolt first, you'll never get the nut on because there'll be all burrs, you'll damage the thread when you're cutting. So if you put the, the nut on, first of all, and then cut with a junior hacksaw, if ever you want to undo the nuts, you can always put it back again because when you undo the nut, you'll flatten down all of the burrs around the thread so the, the bolt will still be usable. So always put the nuts onto the bolt before you cut it off to the correct length. Okay, it's the next day and I've sawn off the bolts there. Uh, horrible fiddly job because I don't use electric saws, but it's done now. Okay. Okay, now this is the bottom of one of the fins and I don't want that corner sticking out where someone could hit their head on it. And all of this bit here is structurally not doing anything at all. So I'm going to chop that off diagonal along there. And also I'm going to take these brackets off now that I know that they will fit and everything. I'm going to take them off, put all the nuts and bolts and washers somewhere safe. And then I'm going to paint the fins all white. Okay. Okay, well actually I've just thought while it's early in the morning, it's only 10 o'clock, I want to get the drilling done now. I don't want to be drilling late at night. And if I paint these things now, it might mean that they won't dry. I won't be able to put them up on the wall till the early evening, so I don't want to disturb the neighbours. So now I'm going to mark out on the wall where I'm going to drill the holes to fix them. Now, for a start, I'm going to need to find the centre line of that wall. It's an old Victorian house, so the, the ceiling could be pierced, the floor could be pierced, but I want a horizontal line in the middle and I need to find the centre line of that wall. Now, so how do I do it? Well, one thing that I know is that that wall is about 90 inches wide. So I'm going to put one end of the tape measure on that wall and I'm going to go along 45 inches and put a mark. Then I'm going to put the end of the tape measure on that side of the wall and go along and put another mark 45 inches again away from the, that side of the wall. That will mean that there'll be two marks very near the center of they'll be very near the center, right? So there'll be two marks there. And I know that the center line of this wall will be in between those two. I'll do it now and show you. Okay, so that is the line 45 inches away from that side of the wall, and that is 45 inches away from that side of the wall. So I know the center of the wall is gonna be in between the two. It just makes it much more easy, much more manageable to, to do it. 
Okay, so there's a first setting out line, there's a second setting out line, and that's the centre of the room, drawn with a spirit level. Okay, now we don't want to make more holes than we have to in the wall, so we want to get these holes right first time. Now, there's a fin laid out on the floor, and you see that that there is the, the hole for the bottom rail, and that there is the hole for the top rail. Now, that hole for the bottom rail should be one metre above finished floor level. And I've set out the tape measure there, so that that end of the tape measure is presumably on finished floor level. And so, if we look at the tape measure just here, we see that that is uh, one metre just there. That is one metre. i uh, put a little green mark on. And so that is the level of that hole, one metre above finished floor level. And now I've followed the tape measure up, and it turns out that the centre of the bracket is 181 centimetres above finished floor level. So that's the line that I've got to draw now, a horizontal line, 181 above finished floor level. And I know that if I draw a line on that wall, 181 above finished floor level, that that fin will be at the right height on the wall and we won't have to close dragon on the ground. Okay, now that is the point where 181 centimetres above finished floor level meets the centre line of the room. I put my spirit level on top of there, got it all level, and it gave me that green mark over there. Okay, now you see the spirit level is a bit old, I've dropped it on the floor a few times, it might be a bit inaccurate. So what I did was, I flipped the spirit level around again and did exactly the same thing again, and it gave me the same reading, so I knew that the spirit level, although it looks beaten up and it looks pretty bad, it actually is still accurate. I did two marks on the wall and they both came out exactly the same level. So I know that that is 181 above finished floor level of the centre of the room. Okay, so where do we drill the holes in the wall? Well, we know that these rails are two metres long. And so we could measure the rail going into there and take away the thickness of the wood and then calculate the bracket, but that's really tricky. So what we're going to do is, first of all, I'm going to put the two, I'm going to hang the two middle ones on the wall and I'm not going to have the bays even. I want the gaps at the sides to be a bit smaller and for there to be a big major space for those in the middle. Okay, so I'm going to hang that one and that one both two foot away from the wall on either side. Then, once I've done that, it's going to allow me to hang everything else so I can work out where exactly to drill the holes for the, the end ones. Okay, I'm looking through the old toolbox to try and find what screws I've got, what wall plugs I've got. For this, you're going to need four screws to go into the wall, and don't use any screws like two and a half inches long, they won't be substantial enough. The outer bit of the wall is going to be render, and that's not going to support um, stuff. And so, I've got sort of four screws here, they're about three inches long three and a half inches long, something like that. Yeah, three and a half inches long. I'm a bit short in supply for wall plugs, so these ones are a bit puny. I'm going to use two wall plugs for every hole. I'm going to put one of them in, then one of them on top, just to make sure. Okay, so now to find a drill bit. Okay, here are my various um, bits of masonry drill bits. So they're the skinny ones, fat ones. Uh, I'm going to make a hole with a skinny one to begin with, and then um, see if that works. Hopefully I won't have to resort to using Big Bertha later on. Hopefully one of these, sort of, I think they're six to eight millimeter drill bits will be enough. Okay, but first of all, I'm gonna try it with this, I think the six mil masonry. And then if that doesn't work, I'll just do it again with an eight mil. But it's fine to do a small hole and then a bigger hole. Uh, I, I think it's better because it's easier to, and more accurate to do a, a small hole, first of all. Okay, cheers. Okay, I was having a bit of a, a problem working out how far the end brackets would be from one another um, because every single one I do is different, so every one to a certain extent you're learning from scratch. But I've worked out how to do it. I've set it all up on the floor here, and so there's the end fin, there's the other end fin, and I've got all the rails connecting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle through the whole of that bracket, and then I'm going to draw a circle through the whole of that bracket, and then I can measure from one to another with the marks on the floor when I'm finished. And that will tell me how far apart the holes on the wall should be for the brackets to go in. But it's very difficult to get it right because there's a little rebate that I've cut in there for the, the pole to go into. 
So what I don't want to do is start getting the depth of that hole and adding it to the length of the bracket and stuff like that. That's very difficult. And it's best to do things with reality rather than with uh, a tape measure and calculations. And so, right, I know that those two brackets are now the correct distance apart for that hole to slot into the hole that's in there and the hole that's in there. So now I'm going to measure the distance between. Okay, at this end of the tape measure, there's a circle that I drew. And on the edge of the circle, I've put to the millimetre number 10. I didn't want to go at the end because you can't see numbers at the end. So that's our first circle. And I've started off at 100 millimetres. I go all the way along to the other circle. And there it is. And we see that the other circle is 1982. So I'm going to subtract 100 millimetres from that, which makes, because I started 100 at that end, so that makes 1882 millimetres apart. So this hole and that hole are 1882 millimetres apart, and that's how far apart on the wall I've got to do the holes. Okay, I've cut the angle off the bottom, so I'm just going to tie it with a bit of sandpaper. And like all the other ones, obviously I'm not going to measure it on the others. I'm going to lay this one over the other ones to make sure that they're all exactly the same shape. Okay, the wood is cut, all of those corner things are taken off. The brackets are up. I'm going to leave the last bracket till um, it's all in place so I can get it absolutely to the millimetre tight. And these uh, another two bits of wood that I'm going to use at the top to put sort of hats on and boxes and stuff like that. So that's going to be like just a lid. And so now I'm going to paint it all white before putting it all up. Okay, they're painted with undercoat. Okay, there are the bits of wood that are all painted white. Um, I stupidly allowed myself to get talked into having this room with two different shades of grey. Uh, if you paint everything white, it means you never run out of paint and you never have trouble with the skirting boards and architraves, having to draw clever lines and stuff like that. It's always best to just paint everything white. That way you always know in two, three years time, you can always get a paint that will match and that will patch in any bits of sort of marks on the wall and stuff like that. So anyway, right, there's my bits of wood. They're all painted white and um, I'm just gonna uh, wait for the paint to dry and next up. Okay, the first two fins are up, they've got the rails going through, they're at the right height, and both fins are equal distances from the adjacent walls. Okay, now I'm going to put the other two fins on and stuff like that. Okay, it's starting to get there, I've just got to put the end bracket on, on the fourth one over there, that bracket there, just to make sure that it's good and tight, and that the rail at the bottom goes into the holes at either end, really snug. And also I've got this hat thing that I've got to work out on the top, I've got to get that properly positioned um, and, um, and I'm going to put some hooks at either end so if you've got something long like an overcoat or a long dress that won't fit in one of these sort of half of someone's body we can have the full length ones at either end because we've only got a couple um, if there's a problem with that you can always sort of chop the rails to make that space bigger Okay, well there's always one that won't play the game, so that bracket there, I hit something in the wall when I was drilling that I just couldn't get through, maybe there's some concrete or some steel or something halfway through the wall that I just couldn't drill through. So with that, I had to use the, the other hole, you see, that one's drilled on the far one, whereas that one I had to drill it close. So it's handy why I had the bracket that way around, it meant that if I hit something with that hole and I couldn't get it through, it means I could always put the fixings through that hole. So it was a bit of a hassle that one, but it's more or less looking as it should now. Okay, it's getting there. I'm putting these little brackets on the top two shelves. So I'm doing that to make sure that this fin is always pushed tight up against that rail, because that rail is going into a hole in there halfway through, and I don't want this fin flapping out so that the, the end of the rail becomes exposed and drops. So these are handy because they, they pull the outer fins together. They make sure that they're the right distance apart so this way is always secure in there. Okay, but the whole thing is looking more or less there now. It's pretty much there. Okay, I fixed the brackets at either end so it's fairly nice and tight now. That's more or less it. I'm now going to 
just um, touch up a bit of painting and sort out bits where I've made marks on the wall and sand down a couple of things that I thought I'd missed. And then it's time to put some clothes on and see if it all works and hopefully the clothes won't all drag on the floor and stuff like that. Okay, wicked. Okay, so that's it more or less done. The four fins of 18mm spruce pry, they cost £30. The two rails cost, I think, about £10. The four brackets cost about £10. And the two planks of wood on top cost £10. So if you also take into account paint and any nuts and bolts, fixtures and stuff like that, the whole thing costs about £70 to make. But if you're going to try one, allow at least a day to do it. Um, it will take you between sort of one and two days to do it. The cutting the bits of wood and stuff like that is just easy. You, you'll, you'll get all the wood cut and the holes do it and everything and think, oh, I'm almost done. But overwhelmingly, the work involved is um, getting it all mounted and assembled correctly at the right height and um, in, in the right order. You might have to sort of disassemble it to, and then reassemble it in order to make sure you don't get sort of paint everywhere and stuff like that. You, you'll see what I mean when you, try, when you try one yourself. But overwhelmingly, you've got to remember the job is only 40% of the job because the, most of the work involved is actually buying the materials, preparing things and tidying up afterwards. Okay, um, I'll just do another one of it filled up with clothes in a bit. Okay, so there it is sort of loaded up. I haven't arranged the clothes particularly neatly or anything. But so, right, there's all the, the gear on it. Uh, I might at some point get the bracket that's there and flip it around the other way to get this fin and that fin to move them a bit sort of in a bit. Um, if, if the span is too big in the middle that that rail starts to sag, then I'll move them in a bit and then it'll be fine. But every single one I do is the first time I've ever done it like that. And so I keep, mod I keep changing the dimensions every single time I do it, just for the different situation, the different size room, things like that. If you are in a situation where like uh, one of you isn't that tall and you can't reach up that high, you might have to change the dimension of the, the top rail. Or, or if someone has lots of... Um, uh, three quarter length coats or lots of really long overcoats then you might have to hacksaw off the, the bottom rail and have one whole section where sort of clothes can hang down lower and so but anyway that's how I've done it we've got all the, the hats there all the shoes are going to go underneath and there's two rails okay I hope that's been of some sort of interest to somebody cheers okay that's done I'm more or less happy with it now you see that the two middle bays have moved in a bit. That's because these two middle bays are flipped to the brackets around behind so that that middle bay becomes smaller. Before the rail was just too long and it was sort of sagging in the middle. So I, I tr tried to take on too ambitious a, a span with that. But I admitted defeat and I moved them closer together and that's all done. And so if you try one of these at home, you, you're going to have to similarly I always reevaluate what I've done because the chances are the brackets you buy will be slightly different design, the rod will be slightly different thickness, stuff like that, and maybe you're very tall or very short, in which case this design would have to be slightly adapted. And so always keep looking at it and reevaluating it as you're making it. Also, you'll see I put a couple of hooks up there and a couple of hooks up there for these long items like the overcoat, they go there, sort of thing. And so it's just little things like that that make it particular to this space that would probably be totally irrelevant for you. But anyway, so that's done for 70 quid and a couple of days messing around. We have now stored all of our clothes, basically. Okay, hope that's of help to someone somewhere. Cheers, bye.